welcome to this episode of John's Motorcycle Rescue and Review. Today I am reviewing Yamaha's XS1100 Special. This bike is a 1980 XS1100 Special. I bought it with just under 6,000 miles on it, so it is a low mileage survivor. I've gone through the process of making this thing ready to go. I've gone over it from front to back and it just runs 100%. Everything runs like it should, shifts like it should, and I'm excited to do this review. I've been waiting for a while, going through the process of getting this bike ready. You guys can check that out on the Yamaha XS1100 playlist. Yamaha designed their first big bore four-cylinder motorcycle in 1978. It came out, it was the XS1100, and it was a little bit different style than this. The special version of the XS1100 is a cruiser-style bike. So it has more of the peanut style tank and it doesn't have any tail section here, it just has a chrome fender. But the original version debuted in 78 and it was actually the quickest bike in the world at that time. It had a powerhouse 1100cc inline four cylinder. This was a big deal. Everybody else at the time was 1000ccs and Yamaha came out with the 1100 and it just pulled like a freight train. This is a two valve per cylinder motor. Unlike the other motorcycles in this class, the motor on the Yamaha actually spins backwards. And I'm not sure what the net effect of that is, but it is a very, very smooth power plant. It has a five-speed transmission acting through shaft drive. It has big dual disc brakes up front, and these are grabbed by large single piston calipers. It has a single disc brake out back. It has the conventional shocks on it, and it has air assist front forks. Though the original XS1100 was a fast bike, it was really designed to be a sport touring bike or touring bike. Even though this bike looks more like a cruiser, it really retains that touring feel of the original. And as such, this is a wonderfully comfortable, smooth place to spend time. All right, enough talk. What does the XS1100 like to ride and drive? What is it like out on the open road? Well, I'm gonna grab my gear, I'll bring the camera along, let's find out together. Let's ride.
What a smooth powerhouse. I'm currently riding Yamaha's 1980 XS 1100 Special. I just finished this project up and I could not be happier with the end result. This bike rides so nicely. It's so smooth and it has such a different flavor than the other big bore classic cruisers in my garage. And one of the first characteristics you'll notice the way I've got this bike set up right now with this handlebar, it is very, very neutral in the seating position. It's very comfortable. I've got just a mild lean into the bars, which helps with the wind. And the liquid smooth power from that 1100cc motor is amazing. This thing has pull everywhere and it is so smooth throughout the rev range. Another thing that's really apparent right away on this bike is the stability. It seems to have a little bit of a raked out front end and that makes it really, really nice and stable on the highway and at higher speeds above 55 miles an hour. But it also means that it is not as quick to transition into corners as some of my other classic cruisers. Another thing that's noticeable right off the bat is this bike really likes decisive shifts. And if you're lazy with the shifting, it just kind of feels a little bit crunchy going into gear. If you're decisive with your shifting, it just snaps into gear. And it's really not bad shift quality. This bike does handle nicely. You're always aware of the weight and with that raked out steering on lower corners you have to maintain pressure on the inside handlebar uh, to keep it on line so it kind of wants to fall into corners and that is just a trait of a motorcycle that has a little bit of a raked out front end ride compliance wise this bike actually rides really nice and this is where if i had to describe this yamaha it's really the touring choice of all of my classic big bore cruisers. I have upgraded the brake rotors and the brake lines on this bike and rebuilt the whole braking system. And it does have ultimate stopping power. It stops pretty well. But as far as brake lever feel, it feels like you get a lot of pressure on the lever and then not much happens and a little bit more pressure and then it stops hard. So it's not quite as easy to modulate under hard braking as some of my other bikes. And there is also a significant amount of dive on the front end. So in aggressive sport riding, this, this bike kind of suffers in those areas. But again, where it suffers, the flip side of that is it's such a nice touring platform and I'd love to put an MGO fairing on the front of this like I have on my GS 1100 and just ride this thing for miles. The seat is very comfortable. The ergonomics now that I've changed from the Buckhorn handlebars are very very comfortable as well. The engine is so smooth and it's just a king of roll on it. Rolls on so nicely with that mid-range. Because this bike is so good in the touring mode, it is the only one of my cruisers that I would actually consider taking on a longer trip. And the, it really has a magic carpet ride to it. It really soaks up the bumps. It's very stable. It's very smooth. And as long as you're not too aggressive in the corners, too aggressive with braking and transitions, it's really, really happy and a really, really nice place to be.
Man, what a lot of fun. I honestly didn't want to come back and finish up this review. This Yamaha XS 1100 Special is by far the most touring oriented of the power cruisers or the big bore cruisers of the late 70s and early 80s. It's so smooth, it's so refined, it has such a magic carpet ride, and it's so stable at speed. It just really makes you want to get out and go explore across a couple of state lines. The seat on this is super comfortable. And with this lower bar, man, the seating position is just about perfect for a standard style motorcycle. I really enjoy it. The only thing that I'm considering adding is a small front fairing here to break a little bit of the wind to be able to really take advantage of those longer trips and to enjoy this in the setting that it was really designed for. Some of those features that make this such a good touring bike the somewhat raked out front end, that stability, and the weight of the bike really somewhat conspire against it in a sporting role. If you're looking for a bike to really blitz some back roads and fly around the corners on, this is not the first choice. This is probably the lowest bike on the totem pole as far as actual hardcore sport riding goes. You can push it a little bit, but it's you're always aware of the heft. Even with the upgraded brake rotors and even with the upgraded brake lines, the steel braided lines that I put on this bike, it has ultimate stopping power, but the brakes don't have that much feel to them. And that also conspires against it in a sport riding mode. This big four cylinder motor is one of the smoothest four cylinders I've ever ridden. And there's just very minimal vibration that you get through the seat or the pegs or the bars. And it's so smooth and so nice to ride for long distances. Styling wise, I like the original styling on the original XS 1100. I'm not as much of a cruiser fan traditionally, but the styling on this is growing on me. I certainly like the way it looks with the lower bars on it. And I think it's a very clean design. I think it's a handsome bike. And I love the presence of the motor. It has a big motor and it's kind of, it looks wide across and it just looks tough. It's a neat looking bike and I really like the clean styling of it. Transmission wise, this bike really likes very precise, very quick shifts. It doesn't like it if you kind of take your time, if you shift it slowly. It can feel a little bit crunchy between gears if you're not shifting it deliberately and smoothly. It's not really a bike that I feel super comfortable just ripping it up through the gears. On some of the early model XS 1100's second gear was known to go out and I certainly wouldn't want that to happen on this bike. And there's absolutely no need for me to be trying to set the ultimate quarter mile times on this beautiful classic. I love the mid-range on this bike. It really pulls hard. It's a shame it only has an 85 mile an hour speedometer because with the stability, I think this is one bike that I would actually feel comfortable on just riding it up to top speed. Since this is an XS 1100 review, I'm gonna give a shout out to my Aussie subscribers, simply because the XS 1100 was so popular down under. All right, I'd love to know what you guys think. If any of you have owned an XS 1100 before or ridden one and want to comment, please feel free to do so in the comment section below. As always, I hope you found this video entertaining and informative, and until next time, enjoy the ride.